Hey, here to talk about something I've never heard anybody talk about, although I do make a lot of um, noise about it if you're participating in my four-month upper register course or even just other lessons. It's the topic of embouchure encompassing everything here or embouchure surrounding the lips and the lips and the lip tissue itself being different and having a different kind of a strength. So most, actually maybe 100% of people think the embouchure is everything and the lips. And I used to think that too until um, several events happened that caused me to think differently. Um, there, in my opinion, is a big difference in the, the muscle fiber and the tissue in the red part of your lips here than the thicker muscles that surround your lips and your corners. And I want to talk to you about um, the difference and why you might want to explore increasing the strength of your lips in addition to your embouchure. Now they're not um, totally separate. In other words, if you're going to be working on the strength of your lips, your, your um, corners and your embouchure will come into play. If you're going to be working on lip flexibility, lip slurs and glissandos, things like that, your lip strength and will get affected and it comes into play. So they are interrelated, of course. But, for example, if you've ever had the feeling of playing and playing for a long time and you feel like your chops are kind of given out on you, but you notice that you're... You can still play, but the, it feels like the, your lips bottom out on the mouthpiece. They just kind of keep caving in. Part of that is, yes, the, the corners are getting fatigued here. They are getting fatigued. But the real reason that's happening is the muscle fiber here can no longer plump up and create that cushion that you need um, on the horn. Remember, if that cushion goes away, um, your range runs out and so does your plane. In fact, that's the whole reason that we all have a maximum range, regardless of how high it is. Your high range actually quits when you're using the maximum amount of pressure and you go that one step further and no more sound or note will come out. That's because you stop the vibration of your lips. And as a result, you have no more cushion left. You're like really jamming the mouthpiece on hard. Obviously, we want, we want to have the strength in our lips, keep our lips puckered and plump when we're playing not have them be all the way stretched out to where the pressure is cutting off all the vibration. So, how can you really tell the difference in um, lip strength? Well, one, I'm going to be posting another video I did quite a while ago. It's actually the second hardest technique of the 75 techniques uh, in my course. It's the um, triple octave scale. The triple octave scale is actually done in one breath and has gone up and down in three octaves with no tonguing. What makes that so hard is you have to roll in your lips and your embouchure in real time and you don't get the ability to cheat and re-attack and restart the tone with your tongue or with your breath. We all know if we go high and we take a breath or we tongue, that gives us a little bit of advantage to keep either going higher to make that higher note easier, right? But if you start low, and only tongue one note and go all the way up come all the way back down smooth and fluid you have to have a lip strength to roll in your embouchure in real time rolling in your embouchure because you're actually contracting the space or the aperture to be able to speed up the air that's one way um, that we get compression so you have to be able to do that in real time yeah your chops in your corners here may help out a little bit but it's your lips doing the heavy lifting and if you don't have that lip strength, um, you're not going to be able to um, get the most out of your playing and the, the smoothness and the ease of getting around the horn. So um, I'm going to be posting that video to further show the uh, difference in lip strength and um, embouchure strength. Embouchure strength, as we all know, is, is when you're um, just, I mean, there's a lot of ways to demonstrate it. But we, basically, when you're doing um, simple lip slurs. Okay. I felt, yeah, my lips are doing this, blah, 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 but I'm feeling most of the muscle contraction here. 
in in the corners in the embouchure and so as a result um, if you're working on the old tried and true methods that you've heard um, from everywhere on the forums from past trumpet teachers from current trumpet teachers from your friends from professionals that you may know or work with the same stuff comes up all the time practice long tones practice scales up an octave try taking things up an octave um, and um, lip slurs or lip flexibility exercises those are all great for uh, building up your embouchure and your chops to a certain point they won't really um, increase your range um, to your absolute potential the reason why because it lacks that one awesome ingredient called momentum and momentum combined with um, a plethora of techniques hitting you from all angles is what will really bring out the best in your plane and the maximize your power and strength so long tones scales practicing up an octave um, and lip trills and lip slurs you hear that all the time in fact if go ask somebody right now go to your co local college or university and say you want to learn you want to play higher how can you do it you're probably going to hear part of that or all of that and not much else and that's only going to take you so far it's not going to bring out your maximum and your best so there are things that you can do to strengthen your lips and um, there's a ton of things to do but pr probably the most basic heavy lifting technique for pure lip strength is a simple free lip buzz you got to be able to lip buzz and now if you the, here's the catch 22 about lip buzzing if you um sorry about that if you lip buzz too loudly or for too long of a time uh, you're going to really screw yourself up <laughs> So that, that's why a lot of people poo-poo lip buzzing or they say, oh, don't lip buzz because it's not realistic to what we're doing on the trumpet. Lip buzzing is a tool and um, it's the, one of the best tools to increase the lip strength. And you will find that if you do a little bit of lip buzzing and use that as to complement maybe your lip slurs, your lip trills, pedal tones, and other things that you're doing for the physical part of the horn, you're going to see better results and quicker results. That's just the way it is, because you're working on the one thing that most people don't work on, and that's actually this tissue here in the, in, in the red part of your lip. Don't believe me? This is kind of gross, but go look at a cadaver. Go to your, your university medical school if they'll let you do it, or watch videos. If they, You'll see that they can actually take the whole skin, and your face comes off like a mask. It's actually really gross. But when you notice that the, the muscle fibers and the tissues here pay careful attention the tissue here is very feather like but the this here is uh, different I would say almost kind of grisly like it's just a different kind of tissue it's not the same tissue as the muscle that surround the lips it just is what it is it's science that's anatomy so uh, back to um, lip buzzing now When you notice that the, the muscle fibers and the tissues here pay careful attention the tissue here is very feather like but the this here is uh, different i would say almost kind of grisly like it's just a different kind of tissue it's not the same tissue as the muscle that surround the lips it just is what it is it's science that's anatomy so uh, back to um, lip buzzing now there's a lot more stuff that you can do to increase the strength of your lips um, also, just a caveat, that building lip strength is not really a do-it-yourselfer. People tend to find themselves in more trouble and playing worse um, if they don't have the help of someone who actually has been there and done it and um, over and over and knows what they're doing. The simple reason is because um, it's kind of a stealth technique and so you can do it and feel great and after a couple of days you just shot yourself in the foot. You feel like you can't play, you can't get a buzz out. Chances are you were probably lip buzzing in the car or lip buzzing doing something. You weren't paying attention to the time 
or you're buzzing way too loud. Some people have this logic, there is a logic to it, if I can buzz loud and buzz high, that's just going to make me that much better of a player, right? Wrong. If you buzz too loud and too long, you're just going to actually screw yourself up. You're going to numb all this in here and make it too stiff and it's just not going to vibrate. As a result, your range is going to drop down lower. So, um, getting back into lip buzzing, um, you can do a couple different things. You can do scales and arpeggios, um, target different notes. I have a whole system that I use for lip buzzing in the um, upper register program, in the brass upper register program. And by the way, this is for all uh, brass players. If you have to buzz your lips into a mouthpiece, regardless of what instrument that you play, this technique is viable for you. And the thing is, it's not just about going up, it's also about going down low. So, if I were to start on a concert B-flat, buzz my lips, I would hope to be able to get down several octaves, nice and relaxed. That was actually a triple pedal C lip buzz. And uh, when you get down there, um, I don't call it a true lip buzz because what, if you notice what, what's happening is you have a lip buzz combo lip flap or lip flutter. But still, if you can make that um, triple pedal C or triple pedal B flat come out like that, That would be an octave higher on the double. Um, you have to have some degree of flexibility to be able to do that. Another one would be to do what singers do. You know, when you hear singers go, ah, and they go down low, you can kind of do that on your lips. that just kind of wean all the way down to pedal C double pedal C and then all the way down to triple pedal C you have to have some degree of lip flexibility and lip sensitivity in this part not just talking about here we're not really working anything here this is now all about the lips this could be nice and pliable and, and flexible and strong if your lips are screwed and they're too tight and they're too brittle you're not gonna be able to do what I just did so you might want to try that. And um, by the way, that's a culmination of a lot of years of working on lip buzzing. And so um, you might, if you find yourself not being able to do that, um, you can get with somebody or you can get with me. Um, I tend to do a lot of um, lip buzzing techniques that will allow you to really maximize your potential. So you got to be able to go down. you got to be able to go up. I'm not playing this loudly or buzzing loudly. Just an easy, easy lip buzz. Let me see if I can get a little bit higher. Okay, got a little chunk of the um, the double C there. So think about it. If you're causing your lips to vibrate that fast, there is some lip tension. Um, has to be there, right? Look, let me show you what happens when there's no lip tension because I've noticed there's, there's a lot of um, professionals out there uh, also teaching. They're trying to say, use no lip tension. Here's no lip tension, okay? Get it? So when you hear people saying, no, don't use any lip tension, that's no lip tension. You have to have some degree of lip tension. What they probably really mean is don't use too much tension, and that's kind of ambiguous, right? So just so you know, when you hear people say, well, you you know, you shouldn't have any lip tension at all when you're playing. It should be totally relaxed, totally effortless. No, because if you have no lip tension, it's this. There's no lip tension there. You're not going to get anything except for maybe some double pedal, um, pedal tones to come out. A little bit of tension. 
A little bit more. Just a little bit. And then let's see if I can get the next one to come out. <laughs> there we go. That was a, um, quite a lot of attention, or a lot of tension, to get that note um, to compress out. That was a double C on my lips. So, I hope this little talk about lip strength and um, corners. And we know the corners again. I mean, most people know about the embouchure and the corners because, you know, that's all you've ever heard about. That's pretty much all corner strength for me. My lips are doing a little fish movement, wah, 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 when I'm doing it, but they're, I'm not really engaging a lot of musculature and a lot of um, tension, a lot of um, um, contraction of my lips. It's really, they're, they're kind of moving in and out like a little fish movement when I'm doing the lip trill, but it's this here is doing the heavy lifting. And you already know about that, right? Lip trills, lip slurs, glissandos. So the whole purpose of this informative little tutorial is to hopefully open up your eyes to the possibility that there is a different kind of strength happening here in your lips. It's a different kind of strength and it requires some, a different approach. You have to tackle it a different way and you have to think outside the box and do different techniques. So when you build this and the strength of this along with this, wow. I mean, wow, wait till you experience the results and that newfound strength where you can just really grip the mouthpiece and everything feels awesome. You got the cushion there, you got the lip pucker and it just won't go away. You got lots of strength. In fact, one thing that I've noticed, in fact, when you hear me, I have to be honest with you, I haven't even played my horn today. I haven't. So the one thing about developing your lip strength is, um, you have the feeling that when you pick up the horn, you're already kind of half warmed up. So I haven't warmed up today, but I know that I can still get on the horn. No, really, I haven't warmed up. You Just what you saw me do here. I'm at the college here. Just thought I would make this video. That's with no warm-up. And I attribute it attribute that to a good portion of the lip strength here because if I didn't have the lip strength in the thickened fibers in the cushion it would have been like when I was a lot younger in high school I could have never done that because after the high C I would have been smashing my lips right into my teeth it would have cut off the tone regardless of how strong this was so I'm Kurt Thompson I hope and I, I hope I open your eyes up to um, some new possibilities thinking outside the box um, and also this is scientific uh, do your homework check into the anatomy and musculature of the face all this check into it and you'll see that yes this is different the muscle tissue and fiber is different in this little part here compared to around here go check it out for yourself it's actually science and the more you think about it the more logical it does come across to maybe try to work your lips in a different way than you just work the whole embouchure so I'm going to post up that video to the one that demonstrates um, the real-time roll-in and roll-out of your embouchure and that really highlights and depicts this the lip strength more so than the embouchure yeah you have to have you know strong corners to be able to do the, the triple octave scale and um, there's no getting around that you can't do the triple octave scale if you don't have the lip strength so I'll put that up and I'll probably talk a little bit more about that, but when you see that, try to do it in the range that you have for three octaves. Do it exactly like I demonstrate, and you'll find that if your lip strength is lacking, although you might be able to hit the high notes, you won't be able to do the triple octave scale because you won't have the lip strength to do it. If you'd like to find out more about how to improve the physical part of your plane, 
improve your lip strength. If you'd like to learn 75 techniques, that's just totally going to wow you and give you that aha experience. Um, it's not a magic um, overnight thing or miracle pill. Uh, it does take a little bit of blood, sweat, and tears and some um, elbow grease and some of your time and some of your money. But um, if you're willing to think differently and try something new, like so many other people, uh, the momentum aspect of these techniques that I work and live with daily is just almost hard to put into words. It really is. It's amazing. So, you know my site, trumpetsizzle.com. You know my name, Kurt Thompson. And by the way, it's just lovely to be out here in gorgeous Arizona. And I'll just do a little pan around here. Isn't it wonderful? It's about the first week of August. And um, I did see a little moon. There's a little moon popping out. I just had to stop by today because it wasn't that hot. I think it was only about 100 degrees when I got here. It's lovely out. And um, you know what? I think I should probably come out here and um, I might come back out here and play a couple things just for uh, shits and giggles and, um, and put them online because the acoustics out here is great. You kind of get inspired uh, by the scenery. It's lovely out here. And it was lovely talking to you guys, too, um, being out here in such a nice area. And I hope I made sense. Uh, hit me up at trumpetsizzle.com, or I'm on Facebook, too, or YouTube. I'll see you there. Bye-bye. had Pat Hessian's Octavizer, I could have played the triple F. If anybody out there knows Pat Hessian, have him ring me up. I could have got that pesky triple F if I had that Octavizer that he uses. Anyway, you got a close-up of the armature going from first to line E up to triple E and back. Happy New Year. Okay, many of you have asked about the Bud Brisboy mouthpiece method, so I'm going to describe how I started off. I started off with French horn mouthpieces. Now I'm just barely up to a tuba mouthpiece. When I started, I did about 30 seconds to a minute a day, a couple times a week. Now I do between 5 and 10 minutes a day, um, one minute at a time, and taking a break, then another minute, then taking a break. I do that maybe once or twice a week, so 10 minutes twice a week with only a minute at one time. You start off with a French horn mouthpiece. You need a small towel so you can wipe your mouth out so you can grip you it. Like the the teeth are mouth. shut and you actually clamp the lips down on the yeah. mouthpiece and let it hang. You like wipe your mouth out. You. French horn mouthpiece. Then you let it hang over just like that. And you might want to have a clock handy so you can time yourself like for 30 seconds or a minute. Once you can get up to about 10 minutes once a week doing a minute at a time with the French horn mouthpiece, then you would want to move up to the trumpet mouthpiece. Same thing. Wipe the inside of your lips and bend over like this, teeth shut. Grip that and do um, eventually 10 sets um, for a minute each. After that, you will get up to the trumbo mouthpiece. This is kind of where I'm at right now for the most part. Trumbo mouthpiece is kind of heavy. Again, you want to build up to um, 10 minutes, one minute at a time. You wipe your mouth out. Do you shut? Mm. 
in the hardest one that I just started, which I can't really do now. And this is a, a big mama, it's the tuba mouthpiece. And I can only do it for a second or two, but I'm still working on it. Eventually I'll get it. This thing is very heavy. Do I wipe your mouth out good? 